Hello, you lot. What's going on here? We are a crew of alien bug hunters, and we are collecting lots of different alien insects from all over Pontypandy. Ah, I've heard about this. Isn't it one of those crazes that everyone's doing? But, well, we're the only ones doing it in Pontypandy. Got it! Got it! Hmm, not sure you are. Wait, there's a... But I bet they don't have a crew like me. I've got a robot. An alien first officer. Ooh. And a starship engineer. Aye, aye, Captain. <laughs> Very impressive, Norman. Quick, let's get to the next bug. We don't want them to get them all before we do. I just got a bit of a signal. Oh, it's gone again. Why do I get the feeling that this is not going to end well? It's not fair. They've got a van. I'm the captain of a crew. I should have a starship. Up then we beat them. Warmer. Feel warmer. Ooh, toasty warm. Yes, <laughs> feeling hot, hot, hot. Ah, Sam, just in time. We're doing a search and rescue drill. So far, no one has managed to find my expertly hidden... Oh, what? <laughs> Station Officer Steel keeps hiding Dolly, but we keep finding her. We're too clever for him. <laughs> well, we'll see about that, Cridlington. Right, everyone close their eyes and count to 50. This way, crew. We can't go any further, Captain Price. The last bug in our hunt is out there. Oh, they've got a boat. Oh, it's not fair. We'll never beat them now. Think I might just have found my starship, Norman Price. No, Norman. Do you want Charlie and Mike to get all the bugs first and be the champion alien bug hunters of Ponty Pandy? Mm -hmm. No, but what if Ben needs Neptune? He's got Titan. And besides, we'll be back before he's finished his lunch. Hmm, the steering on Neptune is almost the same as on Dad's boat. Take her to warp drive, Engineer Sarah. Ah, ah, I really don't like warp drive. Locking onto Andromeda system now. Eyes on the skies. If those are the right coordinates, Professor, all we can see is a cloud. Well, it looks very clear further out. Mm, it does. If we could just get a few miles off the coast, we'll be able to lock onto the target. But how would we do that? One of those might do the trick. Perfect. Gather the equipment. Nothing will stop us tonight. Take it up, Penny. Thank you, Fireman Sam. Sorry, Fireman Sam. You two must know how dangerous it is to be out near the cliffs when it's getting dark. We did have torches. The torches won't save you from danger, Norman. Why were you out this late? I think we'd better tell him who we are. Uh, you do it, Norman. <clears throat> Files, otherwise known as Agent Price and Agent Sparks, investigators of the mysterious mysteries of Ponty Pandy. We believe that a mysterious group of people are trying to contact aliens and coordinate an invasion of the Moon Men. Right. We were trying to follow them when Norman got a bit too close to the cliffs. Why is it always my fault? Mainly because it is. Sam. I know you don't believe us, but look, we found this. Hmm, that is a bit odd. You coming back up, Sam? Uh, no, Penny. You go back to the station. I'll make sure the kids get back safely. And maybe help them with their investigation. Yes! We'll take the oars, hey, Bronnie? Okay, Dad. Everyone in? It's a bit of a squeeze. To beyond the clouds! Whoa! 
quite a strong tide tonight, Dad. It is, Bronnie. <laughs> it is. Norman. A beach hut with a laptop outside, eh? With the moon in the middle of the screen, eh? I have never said this before, but I think Norman might be right. Oh, this could be a mysterious meeting place. <laughs> I told you, and I told you. Sending signals to the moon men! No, they're not. I know what this is. Penny. We need to hurry, Sam. It's filling up fast. What about Phoenix? Phoenix would be strong enough, but we'll never get her up here in time. Hmm. There is one other thing that might be strong enough to lift up that submarine. Master 2000. I think it might be at the bottom of the lake, Joe. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. did today, Norman. I know. I'm sorry. I won't do it again. But I did get some very good film of you, Penny. Hmm. You won't get round us that easily, Norman Price. No, Norman. I think you're going to be in a lot of trouble when you get home. Oh. But I might have a use for this. Watch my scary movie all by myself. <laughs> this should keep you nice and warm this winter, Bronwyn, and might stop you catching that nasty winter bug that's going around. <laughs> Too late for that, Sam. Poor old James has already caught it. <laughs> and now, with the perfect antidote to the grey weather, it's One Way Street with Shake Up My Summer Go Go. Oh, I love One Way Street. Wake this song is so catchy. Shape up. It Shape is catchy. Up my go -go. Shake, Shake up, up my summer go go. go, -go. Come on, Sam, join in. Uh, this is not really my music, to be honest. Shake up my summer go go. <laughs> Night falls, and that's when the zombies come out. Ha! That's not 
Daddy. Norman Price! Ah! What's the matter with you? Um, nothing. I was, um, just watching the World of Spoons Teaspoons special. What a charming little spoon. I need you to go and pick up dinner from the Whole Fish Cafe. Go out there? But, um, I'm sick. <laughs> I, I've got a winter bug. <laughs> The only thing you've got, Norman Price, is a bad case of lazy lampitis. Now, off you go. Hi, Sam. Hi, Penny. Guess what? We're having a night duty dance-a-thon. <laughs> Sounds great, Elvis. What are you dancing to? When the sun is nice and hot, come and party on my yacht. Wake, Wake up, shake up, shake up my summer go, go, go. Oh, it's going to be a long night. Oh, you don't scare me, Thunder. Just like that silly zombie movie. Oh, 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 oh James. Phew. For once, it's good to see you. Oh, hi, Norman. Oh, no. You've turned into a zombie! A Ponty Pandy zombie! A Pondy! Stay away from me, Pondy! But Norman! <laughs> What's the matter with Norman? Hasn't he seen someone with a winter bug before? Pondies are coming! The Pondies are coming! Oh, must be the coldest night of winter. I can't wait for summer. When the sun is nice and hot, come and party on my yacht. Wake up! Shape up! Oh, fine. Norman Price, against my better judgment, you've got the part. Yes! You won't regret it, Station Officer Steele. I've just come back from the theatre, and all the fire buckets are in place. Excellent, Sam. And while you're here, I wanted to ask you if you would play my father in the show. The great Daniel Steele. Oh, sir, um, I thought maybe I might have a smaller part this time around. It would be nice if I wasn't fighting a fire for once. <laughs> Quite right, Sam. You wouldn't want to be typecast. Oh, dear. Well, it does leave me with a bit of a problem. Who can play Daniel Steele? I think Mike is a rather fine actor, sir. What? what? Mike Flood play the heroic Daniel Steele? Me? <gasps> I'd be honoured. But what? No, I mean... Oh, I suppose so. Well, I must say, this show hasn't got off to the best start. I... I accept this award for best freckles, best redhead, best handsomeness, best glasses, best... OK, final guest rehearsal. Act one, scene one, from the top, everyone. Help! Help! There is a fire in the coal shed! Kill fire effect! Oh no, a fire! we better call Fireman Sam! No, Mike, I, I'm coal miner number three. You're the heroic firefighter? I am? Um, uh, yes, I mean I am! <coughs> Stand back, everyone! It is I, Daniel Steel! You can't call Cat Norman Price! I'm the director! My line is not big enough. Do it again, from the top, and stick to the script, Norman Bright. And quite please, everyone, and action! Help! There's a raging inferno blazing in the old coal shed. Run for your lives! Kiss your families goodbye! Tell my mom I love cut, her! Cut, 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 cut! What, what, what? Norman Price, that is not in the script. Yes, it is. I just wrote it in. You're making a mockery of my childhood. Now... Properly this time. And action! Never fear! Norman Mann is here! Cut! Hot! <laughs> One day, many, many years ago, a really long time ago... Get on with it, Bryce! I am. Before the days of fancy fire engines and big powerful helicopters, a fireman's best friend was his trusty bucket. Pass, pass, pass! Pass the bucket to the next man. Pass, pass, pass! Pass it to the right! Well, 
I think that's dry enough now, Elvis. Ah, right. So, this is where the royal party will get out of their car. So the red carpet should start here. But it has to go all the way to the stage. Here. But it has to go all the way to the car, Elvis. <gasps> I think we might have shrunk the carpet, Sam. Yes, Elvis, I think we have. Oh, no. It's all right, everyone. I'm here. Um, I've brought the bunting. No need to put the red carpet out for me, Sam. I think it might need a clean now, Sam. Shall we put it back in the sea? Listen up, people. We have ten minutes. Oh, no! We'll never make it across in time for the royal visit. Never say never to the... Royal men are Ponty Pandy! So what exactly are the wild men of Ponty Pandy going to do? Teach us to get our flying badges? No. The wild men will show you how to cross a ravine. There you go. Safe as houses. You'll be back before you know it. It's not the carpet it was, Elvis. No, Sam. It isn't. What? The royal party? I mean, I mean the penguins? Oh, whatever they're called. The prince and princess have made an unscheduled stop at Dillis's cut price store. What? Why would they go there? Apparently they've forgotten the little prince's favourite toy and they stopped to see if they can get him something there. So? Why are we waiting here? Last one to see the prince is a mouldy potato. Shall we take the red carpet with us, Sam? No, Elvis. I think this carpet's royal days are over. Come on, James! The prince is waiting! Don't look down! Oh, no! I hate... Yep. We know, James. You hate broke bridges across ravines. But you're nearly here. Gotcha! Now it's just me to go. Let me show you lot how it's done. You show him, Big T. What's that sheep doing? What sheep? Um, looks like it's eating the rope. No, 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 no! Go away, sheep! You're not wanted here. Go and eat something Shoes. else. Come on, Tom. You're a wild man. Right. So let's all get on Trevor's bus. Can I sit next to you, Ellie? Um, of course you can, Norman. But does she have the same qualifications as you, Uncle Sam? Are you sure? Um, would you like a bite of my coffee, Apple Lily? Uh, no thanks, Norman. Right, everybody. Why don't you sing your junior cadet song? Uh, we don't have a junior cadet song. Ooh. That's a shame, Ellie. Maybe you should get one. Oh, that's a good idea, Trevor. Maybe we will. Ready to help me with some Wallaby 2 chicks, Sam? Certainly am, Tom. Right. You two put the new windsock up while we check over Wallaby 2. Roger that, Sam. Right, Elvis. You unroll the windsock and I'll read the instructions. Why would we need to read the instructions for a sock? I put mine on every morning without any instructions. I put my left foot in the one with an L on it and I put my right foot in the one with an R on it. <laughs> it's always best to read instructions, Elvis. Then you know you're doing it properly. <laughs> Maybe you should have read the instructions about holding on tight to the instructions. <laughs> Stage one of our outdoor camping training. Can anyone tell me why I built this campfire here? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mandy. Because it's not under any trees and it's away from anything it can set fire to. I was going to say that. Well, I said it first. Very good, both of you. 
Anyone else? Yes, James. Uh, how many actual fires have you put out? Lots, James. I bet she hasn't put out as many fires as Uncle Sam. I'm going to ask him. She's so cool. So who's going to help me demonstrate barbecue safety? No, me! Uh, uh, oh, there's no signal. I need to get up somewhere high. Careful, Arnold. It's very windy. I can see that, Elvis. Whoa! Whoa! No! no. Uh... Maybe it would be better if you attached the windsock to the bottom of the bowl and pulled it up like a flag. Oh, Sam, that's very clever. Didn't you want the ladder, Arnold? Yes, I did, actually. Ah. That's a very fine cauliflower you have there, Dillis. Oh, thank you, Sam. But it's not as impressive as Trevor's beetroot. Thank you, Dillis. But just wait till you see my radishes. Stand back, everyone. <laughs> Have a look at this whopper. How's that for a big brassica? Looks like a cabbage to me. A cabbage is a brassica, Elvis. Well, I must say they all look very impressive. And, oh, there's still one more entry to arrive. I wonder who that is. I can't wait for my dad to see this. He has no idea I've been using his Growmaster 2000. <laughs> if we ever get there, there must be an easier way to move a giant pumpkin. Oh. Hmm. Come, come. Come, to, come to Daddy. Yes, come on. Sam. What station oh, officer steel doing? Yes, come on. <coughs> what? Ow! You lucky! Oh, yes. It's you, Sam. Yes, hello. Lost something, sir? No, no, I was, um, looking. <sighs> it's James and Sarah's guinea pig. I was supposed to be looking after him, but he's escaped. Oh, no. Norris! Norris, where are you? Norris! Don't worry, sir. We'll help you find him. Thank you, Sam. You keep looking here, and I'm going to get a carrot from the kitchen to tempt him. He might be hungry. Hungry? I think I might know a better place to look. Uh, come on, Elvis. Oh, and uh, grab a shoebox. James, pull harder! We haven't got all day! <sighs> but I'm getting tired. Oh, stop complaining. We're nearly at the top. The downhill bit will be easy. This is going to be amazing. We'll be the giant vegetable champions of Ponty Pandy. Oh, no. A marauding mischief maker's been munching on me munch toot. Come on, Elvis. We might have found our man, a uh, pig. I mean, well, rodent. Looks like my onions are OK. You, uh, haven't seen a guinea pig round here, have you, Mike, by any chance? Yes! That furry fella took a nibble out of my best munch toot and then scampered off. Oh, how are we going to find him, Sam? He could be anywhere. Hmm. We need to split up, Elvis, and be very sneaky. You're late! Do you know how long I've waited to see this movie? It's a who done it, and I need to find out who did it! It's coming now. Uh, OK, I'm on my way. How old is he? Do you want to come oh, and Sorry, Mike, no. can't stop. I've got to go deliver a calf at the farm. I'll need to leave the cat here. I'll pick it up when I collect Hannah. Thanks. Bye. Uh, um, uh, Dad, Norman's waiting to start the movie. Right, Olaf. If anyone needs me, I'll be in my workshop. Wait, what's that smell? Uh, you? No, something really pongs. Oh, it's the cat! Ah, I can't watch the movie with this pong. Just hold your nose. I can't smell smell it! <sighs> I like one of my mum's scented candles. 
She always lights one when Dad takes his shoes off. <laughs> but, 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 but you shouldn't touch matches. Do you want to smell the cat or a candle that smells of cherry blossom breeze? Cherry blossom breeze, I suppose. Then I have to light the candle. Okay, fine. Then maybe we can actually start this movie. <laughs> I've been pounding the sidewalk for weeks when I got my first clue in the case of the stolen Pensy Ponsonby diamond. Ahem. So, today's job's up. Sorry, sir. As I was saying... Oh, dear! What is that ghastly smell? It's not me. Oh, me. Ugh, that's just rotten. Oh, Sub? It's you! You still smell like that boggy dream cut! <laughs> hmm, maybe this uniform needs a bit more than a hose down. Well, Miss Mustard Seed, there was only one person with the diamond that night, and it was Colonel Fish. Oh, what? What did he say? Just listen, Norman. I am trying! But I don't think it was that person. I think it was. Lady Oh, I give up. Not only is that the stinkiest cat ever, it's the loudest cat, too! Shush! This is no laughing matter, miss. Uh, Do you have any uh, witnesses? Uh, Anyone who can vouch? La, 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 la. Whoopsie! There we go! All washed Whoa. and clean as a... or maybe not. Don't worry, Sam. I have a special way of washing stinky clothes. <coughs> but I think I might need my breathing apparatus for this one. Hello? Ah! Ah! Oh, oh, oh. Oh, Don't oh. scare very easily, eh? <laughs> Is okay. Up the trail we go, we go, we go. Ro, 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 Fiddlington, ro, please ro, stop singing. I can't. If you're such a good rider, Mandy, why are you being pulled by Hannah? Come on, cowboy. Keep up, eh? Oh, I'm coming. Mandy, are you sure you're okay on the horse? Yeah, I uh, just wanted to get used to the trail. I am now. Uh, so, uh, you can drop the reins. Great. Now you go on ahead. Uh, I'm going to uh, take a break and uh, feed the horse. Okay, if you're sure. Giddy up. You can do this. Ready? Giddy up. Oh, I said giddy up. Like horses. <laughs> Don't go off the trail. Help! Get me out of here! Scared. So you shouldn't be scared either. There's Moose, Steel, Lizzie, Sarah, and James. Oh, and here comes Norman, who is about to complain. <laughs> My feet are so sore. And here comes Hannah, looking dandy. But where, oh, where is the horse and Mandy? We need to find them. Come on, Lizzie. Boo! Boo! Ah! <laughs> the foot and hoof prints go this way. 
And from the look of it, I'd say Mandy and the horse skidded in this direction, all the way over to here. OK, team, ready for action. Norman Price, ace reporter, on the hunt for a big scoop. Oh, hello, Norman. Do you want to see my new invention? It's a rocket-powered pogo stick. Pogo stick? No thanks, Joe. I'm looking for something exciting and action-packed. Wait, a rocket-powered pogo stick? That's my scoop! Norman Price, ace reporter, reporting from Joe Sparks' garage with a really big scoop! So, Joe, tell the viewers of Ponty Pandy Planet what it is you're doing. Well, today I will be testing my Pogo Master 2000. But first, a word about safety. What? No, no safety, just rockets! I've been reading a fascinating book about combustibility in fuel mixtures. Oh, just fire up the rockets! All in good time, Norman. But first, you need to know the safest rocket fuel mixture is typically 69 to 70% finely ground rocketonium nitroxide, with 16 to 20% unrefined sparksium. It's so boring. And it's oh, I hope Mandy and Sarah's scoop is as rubbish as this. Oh, no! Mandy and Sarah's scoop looks so action-packed! For the propellant. Now I'm going to show you something really exciting. What? An explosion? No. It's the chart I made of my favourite fuel mixtures. One second, Norman. Oh, no! Oh, no! Sarah and Mandy have got 400 views already! Uh, um, uh... Oh. Scoop Dooley says that if an ace reporter can't find a scoop, they make their own! <laughs> this is going to be the scoopiest scoop ever! Oh! I wonder what this button does! <laughs> Maybe I was a little heavy on the rocketonium nitroxide. Hang on, Norman! I have a visual on Dolly. Get her, Sam. We need to get out fast. They've located Dolly and they're on the way down now. Station officer steal his cup of tea, Elvis. Oh, uh, yes. Oh, uh, just getting your tea, sir. <laughs> oh, yes. Norman Price has fallen off the zip line of doom and is stuck in a tree. And he's got a fly up his nose. Penny, you take Venus. Helen, you follow behind in the mountain rescue ambulance. I'll go with Tom and Wallaby too.
Tom. Hang on, Norman. I'm nearly there. Tom, he's fallen into the river. Get me in as close as you can. Roger that, Sam. Ah! That's close enough, Tom. I'm going in. <laughs> Penny, Sam and Norman are in the river. Roger that, Tom. I'll try and intercept them downstream. I think they might be. Stand aside! Hey, give me that! <laughs> Red hot chili nibble? Oh. <laughs> Have you any idea what this space is for, Penny? Uh, no idea at all, Sam. PC Malcolm Williams. Hello. Hooray. Hi, everyone. Red Hot Chili Nibble. Ooh, don't mind if I do. Thanks. Mmm, tasty. <laughs> Mamma mia! I think Mum might have made her Red Hot Chili Nibbles a bit too red hot. Oh, 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 water! <laughs> ice! <laughs> ice! And water! And, and, and more ice! <laughs> um, kids? Mum! This isn't going very well. Water! Don't worry, Mum. We just need to get back to the cafe and make a new batch of red hot chili nibbles. With a bit less of the red hot. Oh. Agreed. Right then, Malcolm. Come and meet the team. Ah, Malcolm, this is Helen Flood, Ponty Pandy's nurse. Oh, hello, you big lemon. You're the big lemon round here. Huh? Uh, um... But don't worry, Sam. This big lemon here is my big sister. Ah, I see. I didn't know you were coming to Ponty Pandy. Well, I got a bit fed up with the big city. Fancied a bit of peace and quiet. Oh, no! Ripper! Uh, is that a dog driving a car? Time to go to work. Welcome to Ponty Pandy, little brother. I'll get the dog if you know how to stop that thing. Roger that, Malcolm. I thought you were taking the cadets on a camping safety trip in the mountains, Station Officer Steele. Uh, yes, but then he had a really good idea that as it was so nice and sunny, we should come to Ponty Pandy Island instead. <laughs> ah, a really good idea indeed. <laughs> but uh, just a teeny bit of a shame that Charlie and I have come here for a quiet weekend. Oh, never fear. The cadets won't be any trouble. I've got a whole list of activities to keep them busy. Right then. Charlie and I will find somewhere, uh, out of your way. <laughs> oh, just one thing. Is Penny in charge of the fire station? Affirmative. Oh, good. Well, Ponty Pan is in safe hands, then. Station Officer Steel, what does this do? Oh. Whoa! 
Actually, with Norman Price here on the island, just how much trouble could there be back in Ponty Pandy? <laughs> Don't worry, Willy. Gotcha. <laughs> Take us down, Tom. <laughs> nice work, Penny. Thanks, Arnold. This should do it. The perfect campsite. And it's nice and quiet. <laughs> There's even a creek. I can teach my big brother a few fishing tricks. This way, cadets. Oh, Sam, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to disturb you. Ah, don't worry, sir. We were just, uh, passing through. Right, Charlie? Right, Sam. Now, cadets, this clearing is the perfect safe location to show you how to light a campfire using only flint stones. Now, let's see. You just... Hit them like this, um, to get a spark. I bet I could do that. I could do it better. Ah, uh, yes. Here we go. I hope you're better at putting out fires than you are at lighting them, Station Officer Steel. Uh, yes, well, you get the idea. Now, cadets, back to the beach for a safety training session. We'll need to get some matches from the boat. Hey, come on, cadets, follow me. I bet I can get to fire going before you can. I bet you can't. James, Sarah, come along. Uh, I knew you couldn't light a fire. I'd have done it if I'd had a bit more time. Come on, then, Wooly. There you go. Got you. Well done, Sam. It wasn't just me, Lizzie. We're a team. Well, I didn't really do anything. You did? I did? Yes. You did a great big belly flop into the mattress. Oh. Come on, Mandy. We can ride the horse to Ponty Pandy Point. We'll easily beat James then. But I can't ride a horse. Neither can I. But how hard can it be? It doesn't even have a saddle. Riding a horse is easy, Mandy. You just have to get on and say giddy up. I've seen it on the telly. Oh, there is no way I am getting on that horse. It's dangerous. There is nothing dangerous about being on this horse. <laughs> It looks pretty dangerous to me. <laughs> Aha! So much for your silly map. I'm going to do it. I'm actually going to win. Oh, wait! Where are you going, Horsey? Horsey! Our position using my map. Norman Bryce is stuck on a horse, which is stuck in some thick, sticky mud. Norman Bryce is stuck on a horse, which is stuck in some thick, sticky mud. Roger that, sir. Tell Ellie to bring Phoenix and meet us there. It's an animal rescue, so we'll need you to come along too, Lizzie. OK. And I'll need someone else. Arnold. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Ellie, remember to turn your siren off so we don't scare the horse. It 
monkeys on the telly! Are you sure you don't need some help, sir? I'm fine, Sam. You just relax. I'll try, sir. I'll try. So, what do you think, James? Well, I think it's really unfair that you called me round to fix it, but you didn't call me round when you were going to play with it. That's because you are so brilliant at fixing things. Hmm. Glue. Screwdriver. Pliers. That should do it. I said you were brilliant at fixing things. Mm-hmm. And I'll be the one to test it. Well done, James. <laughs> it's going really well. Uh, it may be going really well, but I can't make it stop. The throttle's stuck. Oh, no. If we don't get it back, Uncle Sam won't have a birthday present. Quick, Hannah! Follow that fire engine! Oh! Uh, Sam? <laughs> Sam? Sam? Sam! Whoa! What is it, Elvis? Do you think we should go and help Station Officer Steele? Are you sure you're okay, sir? Oh, yes, yes, thank you, Sam. All fine. Just relax. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Apparently, he's fine. Careful, James! I'm trying to be careful! Oh, Sam is going to love his cake! Oh, my! Someone shrunk Jupiter! Oh, oh. Ah, oh. Ah. <laughs> oh, no! I flattened my frosty! Oh. I want to be the king. No, I'm the king. I'm always the king when we play castles and kings. And queens, Norman. And queens, yes. But this is the only hat left. I don't even know what it is. It's what brave knights used to wear, James. Isn't that the hat your mum wore to Auntie Phyllis's wedding? What? No, of course it isn't, Sarah. It's a brave knight's hat. Don't listen to her, James. Now, children, I know how much you love playing castles and kings. So, I've made you a dragon. Oh, a spectacular fire-breathing dragon. I'll be the king of dragons. Yay! It's amazing. No, it's not. It doesn't fly. It's not green. And it doesn't breathe fire. I, I did do it in a bit of a hurry. Why don't I take it back to the station and find some bits and pieces to make it a bit more, um, dragony? I think I'd better go with you. Oh, all right, Norman. You can help me carry it. Right. I just need to get rid of all this old ash from the last drill before we light the cribs. OK, Sam. Don't worry, Jupiter. I've got a plan to get you clean in record time. <laughs> wow! Sorry, Sam. Don't worry about me, Elvis. I could just wash my face. But I think Jupiter might need another clean. Oh, no. There you are, Missy. You'll be clean, pristine and gleaming in no time. Hello, Station Officer Steele. Norman Price. 
What are you doing in Bessie's shed? It's all right, Norris. I'm here. Oh, Gareth, I didn't see you there, as long as he's properly supervised. Have you got anything like a plane engine or a high-powered rocket so the dragon can fly? Well, I've got this old luggage trolley. If it's on wheels, then it might look like it's flying. Hmm. What's all that stuff? That's all the fire lighting equipment we use to light the fire in the steam engine. Wouldn't it be really good at lighting fires in dragons, too? Oh, no. That would be far too dangerous, Norman. Only if you don't know what you're doing. Oh, look! Green paint! The ocean rescue uniforms are lined for warmth in water and brightly coloured so you can be easily seen. And they have a whistle. I love that whistle. <laughs> ah, Sam, just in time. Oh, thanks, Penny. So, let's see how fast you can all change. And go! Good time, everyone. Now, Take those off and we'll get back to the station and see how fast you can change into the animal rescue uniforms. Uh, oh. Oh. You all right, Alvis? Oh, yes, I'm fine. You go on, I'll catch you up. <coughs> oh. So, we're going to have to work very, very hard. We're going to bake all the extra pizzas that Grandad needs. Sarah! Sarah, can you stop playing Ninja Carrot and start making pizzas? Sorry, James. Yes, James. It's Yes, Chef! James, just checking that everything is going okay with the pizzas. Everything's fine, Grandad. They'll all be ready in time. Uh, James, we still need to cook them. And there's not much room in that oven. <laughs> We've got another oven upstairs. Sarah, take those pizzas up and put them in as quick as you can. That's it. We can't fit any more pizzas in this oven. I've put as many as I can in the upstairs oven, James. I, I mean, Chef. But there are still loads left. Oh, there's an oven at my house. Brilliant. So you take the rest and put them in your oven, Hannah. Go, go, go! Uh, yes, Chef. Yes, very good. Yep. Oh, Cridlington. You appear to be wearing an ocean rescue uniform. I am. Um, I can't get out. Oh, stay there then. I might just have the very thing. The animal rescue uniforms are a softer colour, so as not to alarm the animals. And they're made from a material that's very easy to move about in. So, let's see how fast you can change into these. All ready for a walk by the river? Oh, yes. I have my day trip bag, my handbag, and a bag from Phyllis filled with doggy supplies. Ah, ah, right, we're back. Now watch this. Jump in. <coughs> Jump in. <coughs> Norman, when you're telling the dog what to do, you should use her name. So you say, Jump in. Uh... What's that? Norman, I can't hear you. What's the dog's name? It's Lady Pufflepaws. Oh, Mum, what did you say that for? That name is so embarrassing. <laughs> Right-o, 
I've put up the new desk. Are you sure it's the one you want? It's very... Oh. Mike Flood here. Oh, hello, Charlie. A leaky sump pump. Say no more, Charlie boy. I'm on my way. <coughs> Morning. What's going on here? Station Officer Steele's gone to Newtown. He's left me in charge of sorting out his new desk. Uh, Penny, have you actually seen Station Officer Steele's new desk? No, why? <laughs> That's brilliant, that is! It's really not. Oh, so you're having a picnic then? Uh, quick, look! Uh, uh, what's Norman doing? Please do as you're told. This is my chance to show everyone what a super brilliant dog owner I am. Good girl. Now stay. Remember what Sam said. Use her name when telling her what to do. Oh, OK. Stay! Lady Pufflepaw, stay! Shut <laughs> off! I said stay! Ew. I've got doggy lick on my face now! Maybe he's not ready for a dog of his own. <laughs> no, maybe he's not. Oh, but I really want my own dog. I can't get hold of Mike, so I called the desk company only to find out that I didn't order the super multiplex desk. No, I ordered the super multiplex bed. And now they can't deliver the correct desk for another week. Oh, and the old desk can't be used as it's now a heap of scrap. Don't worry, Penny. I have a plan. Huh? Why do I always get stuck with the little crybaby? No, you don't, Norman. You were with me last time. Nelly! Uh. Get on board, everybody. Uh, I'd just like to take a quick look under the bonnet, Mrs Chen. No time for that, Trevor. We're already 11 seconds behind schedule. Come on. Ooh. Right you are. Then, at the end of the film, he says, A man's gonna do what a man's gonna do. Morning, partner. Uh, hello, Elvis. Now, today, we're going to practice rescuing a horse. Good morning, firefighters. Good morning, partner. Pardoner? Is that the correct form of address to a senior firefighter, Cridlington? No. And get down off that thing at once. Sorry, partner, but I've been station officer steel. And that isn't regulation uniform. Wheels on the bus go round and round all day. Sing up, children. The the wheels wheels on the Chen, the wheels on the bus have stopped going round and round. Hmm. At this rate, we won't have time for the crenellations. Yes! I mean, oh no! The crenel what? These up and down bits are. Oh, never mind that. Can you fix it any faster? You know what they say, Mrs. Chen? More haste, less speed. Ha! Looks like we're not going to the boring old ruins after all. Right. I'll just check the accelerator. I'll do it if it'll speed us up. Uh, I'm not sure that... Which one is it? This one here? Yes, but just a gentle tap. Norman Price, get back in your seat. I said gentle. Take your foot off. Uh, the pedal won't come back up. I, I haven't reconnected the brakes. And then you tie your guide rope on like this to keep the horse steady. And if you're a cowboy, you have to herd cattle. Excellent loop, Firefighter Morris. Nice turn, Firefighter McKinley. 
That's James in a runaway go-kart heading for the quay. James Jones is in a runaway go-kart heading towards the quay. That's what I said. Uncle Sam? You were supposed to hit the boxes? Uh, I may as well be doing all the stunts myself. Perhaps these stunts are getting a bit too spectacular, Norman. I'm sorry, Sam, but don't worry. We've only got one more scene to shoot and it doesn't involve any danger. I promise. OK, Norman. Well, good luck. Jake Pond, Super Spy, scene 57. Showdown in the villain's lair. Action! Ah, Mr. Pond. I've been expecting you. Glove fingers, my old foe. Oh, it's a trap! Number two, tie up the prisoner. And cut! Tie up the stunt double! I don't like movie making. Or being tied to a chair. Stop complaining, James. All you have to do is direct a beam of sunlight through this magnifying glass and burn through the rope, like this. Simple, right? Um. Oh. Action! Ooh. in a garage full of burning oil cans. James Jones is trapped in a garage full of burning oil cans. Sorry, Ryan. It's an oil fire, so we'll need the sticky foam. Roger, Roger that, that, Sam. Air, 100%. Hey, Hannah! I just found these fantastic binoculars. Do you want to come to the beach and look at faraway things? We could, Norman. But my mum's got a fox. <gasps> A fox! Oh, I know everything about foxes. I'm like, I'm like the fox whisperer. Where is it? Follow me. There he is. Hello, Foxy. Did you know that some foxes are just like dogs? Mum says they're wild animals. Not this one. Look at him. Well... He does look like a dog. I wonder what he eats. He'll eat bones just like dogs do. I'll find one. You're going to get some dinner. <gasps> Please don't let that just have happened. Uh, it happened. I found a bone. Where's the fox? I opened the cage and it escaped. That was a silly thing to do. You said it was like a dog. Well, you shouldn't listen to me. Oh, no. If we don't get that fox back in his cage before Mum comes home, we'll be in big Mum trouble. There's a good dog, Radar. I'm just going to listen to your heart, Radar. Stay nice and calm. Sam, <laughs> what's happening with Radar? Uh, Lizzie's giving him a checkup, Elvis. We're trying to keep him calm. Oh, right. Come on, Radar! Stay calm! You can do it, boy! Maybe it's Elvis who needs to stay calm. Oh, just have a look in his ears. Oh, 
The big brave dog is going to get his ears checked. Stay still now, boy. Can you do that? Can you? Elvis, uh, would you like to help with Radar's checkup? Of course I'll help, Sam. I'd do anything to help Radar. Then maybe you can wait outside while Lizzie looks him over. Oh! Uh, all right, Sam. Uh, Penny, are you sure you'll manage without me? We'll manage, Elvis. Foxy, Foxy! Foxy! Oh, what if we do find him, Norman? How will we get him back? Easy! I'll scare him back with this pot and spoon, like this! <coughs> Norman, stop! You'll scare him even further away. No, I won't! Oh, look! There he is! That's him! Oh, no, he's off again! Where do you think he's going? I bet he's going home. Home? I think they said no, sir. Wait, uh, I'll take that, sir. Oh. What is that? Oh, hello, Sarah. I didn't see you behind my enormous bat. So, what do you think? I think it's taken up too much space. My ghost is supposed to be the centerpiece. Now look what your bat's done. Take it down now, James. Ready for your spooky party guests. Yeah! Enjoy the party. Cool bat. Wow. Amazing. It's really big. Fugs, I made it. So, who's ready for some of my monster dancing? <laughs> 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 Rubbish. It's getting in the way of my moves. That is no rubbish! Oh, oh no. I know it's here somewhere. Uh, uh. There! Oh, it's time to create the ultimate party centerpiece. Sarah's spectacular house of scariness. <laughs> Thanks for taking the toffee apples, Penny. Oh, um, I'll get it. Uh, Elvis, remember, don't cook the toffee for too long or it'll get too hard to use. It needs to be runny. OK, Sam, runny it is. Oh, tasty toffee apples. I can't wait to make you. <laughs> it... Ah, freeze. Not yet, sir. The toffee has to set on the apples. Oh, this waiting is interminable. So, how's it going, Elvis? Um, I think we might need some new toffee. Ah, and a new pan. Wow, Sarah, that's amazing. What's amazing? Where? Thanks, I made it. So, who's ready to play one of my games? Yeah! Anything but uh, make a mummy. But so this game is called Pin the Tail on the Spooky Cat. Can anyone else smell burning? My house! My bath! Tonight, Firefighter Cridlington is going to be juggling on stage with flaming torches. So it's time for Operation Certain Inferno. Fireman Sam, you'll be leading the line here. Yes, sir. Firefighter Phillips, I want you up here on Jupiter. And Firefighter McKinley, you'll be covering from here. Are we ready? Fireman Sam, standing by, sir. Firefighter Philip, standing by. Firefighter McKinley, standing by. Firefighter Morris, standing by. Wallaby One, standing by. Well, this is relaxing. Right. On with the show. Oh, hello, Ponty Pandy. Wow! 
Well done, Elvis. Oh, yes. Well, well done, Cridlington. Always knew you could do it. <laughs> right, all clear, everyone. Back to the station. Well, I just hope that Mike does as well as me. Hello, Ponty Pandy! I'd like to introduce you to the new member of my band, the Strum Master 2000. There's a place I know where the people say hello. Your new band member's not exactly Elvis, is he, Dad? He will be. Turn it all the way up, Joe. <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh no! Elvis really wouldn't do it like that! Dad! You need to stop! Someone needs to call Fireman Sam! Mike Flood's guitar machine has gone out of control and set the stage on fire. Mike Flood's guitar machine has gone out of control and set the stage on fire! Elvis, you and Ellie go in Jupiter. Penny, you and Arnold take Venus. I'll take Mercury. Ah, oh, it's not fair. Why do I have to help Bella on the day of the big football match? Maybe this won't be so bad after all. Ciao, Norman. Grazie. It's so nice to have a willing helper to die. Uh, 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 excuse me. I'm missing the game. No time for a football, Norman. We have customers. Show them to their table, please. Pronto. Oh, name. Bronwyn and Charlie Jones. Do you have a reservation? Uh, no, but... Uh, this way. Ooh, we've got an amazing view of the game from up here. Really? I hadn't noticed. So nice to get away from the whole fish cafe and try something different. Hmm. I'll have the seafood pizza, please. Ah, oh, so many choices. Um, what would you recommend, Norman? I'd recommend you hurry up with your order. Nice one, love. She's nearly as good at football as I am. Oh, here, Sam. I'm open, Elvis. Oh, no. Stop. That's not how you dribble. This is how you dribble. Uh, to me, sir. I'm free, Station Officer Steele. I've got this all under control. Now, Elvis. Watch a carefully, Norman, and you'll be a master chef in no time. I don't want to be a master chef. I want to watch the football. First, we make a nice and neat circle of bellissimo dough, like this. Next, a nice a big dollop of tasty tomato sauce. Ooh. Uh. And then a beautiful big handful of mouth-watering mozzarella. Finished! And now I'm free to watch the match. Oh, oh. I hate making pizza. Oh, Sam, over here. Oh, I'm not supposed to do that, am I? No, no, you're not, Elvis. Oh. Penalty kick to Ponty Pandy United. Get ready for the penalty kick of the century. Oh, oh. No one said anything about bats. Bats are really interesting. They're really scary. I've seen them in films. They chase after people with their flappy wings and batty magic. 
No, they don't. They're peaceful creatures that hang upside down and eat insects. Yuck! Who cares? They're creatures of doom! If you see one, run! Nasty flappy wings and pointy teeth. Well, if I see one, I'm finding out as much about it as I can. <laughs> Hello, Gareth. Still working on that old handcart? Oh, yes. This old thing hasn't been used for nearly a hundred years. It used to travel in and out of the old mines carrying coal and equipment. Driven by human strength alone. <laughs> oh. I'm guessing it needs a bit of work to get it going again. I'd lend you a hand, Gareth, but we've got to get back to the station. I know someone who might be free, though. Hello, Station Officer Steel. Look, stalactites. Rock formations that hang down. Ooh. And listen, can you hear the underground streams? Oh, I haven't seen one bat. Good, I don't want any of that scary bat magic near me. That sounds scary. Oh, magic, Norman. Ah, uh, yes, they are, Mandy. It's a well-known fact that if they flap near you, you turn into a bat. Are we really deep in the mountain, Moose? Nope. There are tunnels that go much deeper than these, but some of them are dangerous, eh? Huh? Right, so let's head back up to the daylight. Stay close together, everyone. Great. We're getting out of here before I get flapped at. A handcart. Oh, I haven't seen one of those in years. She's a proper beauty. Stiff, though. It could do with some expert attention. May I adjust the crank shaft? Jimbo, your eyes aren't used to the light after being in the dark. You'll be able to see soon. When you do, can you tell me if I've been turned into a bat? I'm sure I got flapped down there. Don't be silly, Norman Price. Hang on, someone's missing. Yeah. Where's Mandy? Oh, I've twisted my wrist. Ow. <laughs> Now swing those buckets round from side to side. So wing! Ow! Ow! Oh, my neck! My foot! Uh, dearie me. Oh, I'm calling Nurse Flood. She needs to examine Ellie's foot to see if she's broken anything. Uh, oh. Um, maybe we should stop now? Shame. I was just getting into my stride. This is going to be amazing! Hang on, where are the oars? They're not here. Is there anything else we could use? Ooh, floppy shovels! They'd be perfect! Oh, uh, watch out, Norman! Now oh, I've lost my paddle! I think I can reach it. Oh, no, now I've lost mine. We're floating away. Only one thing for it. <coughs> What's that? That's Norman and Derek. Oh, dear. Sam, help! We can't get back. Grab hold of the end. Simon, Sam, thank you. You two need to be a bit more careful. Sorry, Sam. Uncle Sam, look over there! Oh, no. We have to deal with that before it spreads. What? Where are the beaters? The what? The floppy shovels. Ah, you see, the thing is, we use them as paddles. Last time we saw them, they were floating off down the river. It was all Norman's fault. 
I don't care whose fault it was. If we can't beat out that fire, it's going to spread fast. No broken bones. It's just badly bruised. Thank goodness for that. What on earth has been going on here? We've been getting fit. Well, I hope you had a warm-up before you started. Well, I... And built up slowly. <laughs> <gasps> There's a woodland fire near the mill. There's a woodland fire near the mill. Hold on! Where do you think you lot are going? There's no way this crew is fit for duty. But there's a fire in the woods. I'm afraid, sir, this is down to us. What? Um, hello? Hello there. Commander Gary, certified astronaut. Oh, uh, <clears throat> good evening, Commander Gareth. I'm taking the science class to see the northern lights aboard my intergalactic space rocket. What? Oh, the train. The Northern Lights, eh? I hear they look spectacular. Indeed. The Northern Lights are coloured lights that appear in the sky. Actually, Mrs Chen, the official scientific name is Aurora Borealis. Yes, thank you, Arnold. Would you like to join us? Oh, can we? We'd love to, Gareth. I mean, uh, Commander Gareth. But, uh, duty calls. Aww. Aww. Aurora Borealis! More like Aurora Bomb to Sleepies! What's so great about a bunch of silly lights in the sky? Are you kidding, Norman? It's going to be amazing! <laughs> this is going to be the dullest science trip ever! Unless... All aboard the intergalactic space rocket! Mandy, Sarah, Hannah, James. Oh, where's Norman? <laughs> Greetings, humanoids. I am Normaxo Brisblax, <laughs> extraterrestrial space alien. Sit down, please, Norman. If we don't hurry up, we'll miss the Northern Lights. Ah, yes, the lights. Those are actually vapor trails from my spaceship. <laughs> Normaxo crash landed in the mountains, then assumed the human form of a handsome young red headed earthling. Ha ha! Very funny, Norman. Hello, Normaxo. I'm humanoid James. <laughs> Greetings, Jams. Oh, don't fall for it, James. It's just Norman wearing tinfoil on his glasses. Normaxo finds this humanoid rude. Normaxo is a ninny. I'm not. R2. Mission Control, this is Commander Gareth. Countdown to launch in five, four, three, two. Oops. Oh. Oops. What do you think? It's amazing. I'm quite impressed, actually. Great, eh? Big and wild. Wild enough for the, the wild, wild men of Ponty Penny. We should get a photo. Great idea, Mandy. Everyone gather together in front of the bear. Just wait till the wild men of Newtown see this. Shuffle back, everyone. Right, that's more like it. Now, everyone say, Grrr. Grrr. What the grizzlies? We better call Fireman Sam. We can't. The radio is in the tent. I'll run to the rescue center and call for help. Trevor and I'll get everyone to safety. Come on, kids. 
Oh, I sure hope that fire doesn't spread to the forest. James, you've completed the Fireman's Arm Challenge! Hooray! Oh. Now, I just need to finish this. We're back! Oh. Oh. Uncle Sam, I spotted something else! But it's not in the house. What is it, James? There's a fire on the mountain! That's where the pioneers are. I'd better call the station. There's a fire on Punty Pandy Mountain. There's a fire on Punty Pandy Mountain! The forest trails are too small for Jupiter. We'll need to take Venus. Short, too bendy. Good morning, Trevor. Good morning, Station Officer Steele. Too soft? Excuse me? No, no, not you. The banana. Now, uh, oh, tea bags. Yes, tea bags. Uh, Anybody here? Gillies! Oh, no! Look at it! A complete fandango! Oh, uh, what, what is it? It's supposed to be a passion fruit and pecan pavlova. I promised I'd make it for the fishy fun day. I've tried it three times now, and every time it turns out worse than the last one. Oh, dear. What am I going to do? <laughs> well, young Cridlington may have his faults, but he's a jolly good cook, and I'm sure he'd help you out if I asked him. Really? Wonderful. Oh, Station Officer Steele, you are a real lifesaver. Oh, sorry. I, uh... Oh, I was just... <laughs> okay. Oi, get up! Shoo, shoo! Nasty seagull. I love bouncy castles. Me too. I can bounce higher than anyone. Not higher than me, you can't. But I can, Mandy. You wait and see. Well, nobody's going to be doing any bouncing till I get this unfolded and blown up. Perhaps you two could give me a hand. I bet I can unfold it faster than you. Bet you can't. Good morning, firefighters. Hello, Chief Fire Officer Boyce. Is Station Officer Steele around? He popped out for some tea bags, sir. Uh, can I help? I just came to introduce Penny Morris's replacement for the day. Come in here and meet the watch. Hi, everyone. I'm Jerry Lee. Jerry Lee Cridlington, Elvis's cousin. <laughs> this is going to take all day. I'm going as fast as I can. Can't we use an electric pump? Oh, we could. But I lent it to Gareth to blow up his inflatable, bouncy steam engine. Don't worry. Shouldn't take me too long. Oh, I forgot the tea bags. Ah. Hello, sir. A pleasure to meet you. I'm. What now, Cridlington? Oh. Did you get the tea bags, sir? Cridlington? What? But you. It can't be. You. You. Uh... Well done, you two. Every pavement in Ponty Pandy safely gritted. Splendid. 
just the driveway to grit now. Uh, this is all we've got left, sir. Oh, dear. Well, we must use whatever grit we have left sparingly. Uh, how do we do that, sir? By applying my maximum cover, minimum grit method. Otherwise known as shaky, shaky, shaky. Shaky, 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 sir. Oh, yes. Now, watch carefully. Shaky, shaky, shaky. 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 Come on, everyone. Shaky, shaky. Don't just stand there. Grab a shovel and join in. <laughs> OK, the rules are our team has to stop your team hitting this can and our team has to stop your team hitting that can. Oh. Well, that's not going to happen. Ready, steady, go. Fair. It's three against two. No, it's not. It's three against three, Derek. You've got the super penguin on your side. Yes, he does. Oh, no. I cannot believe we are related, Norman Price. Ah! Oh! Ah! Oh. Mike, you'd better hurry up. It's getting dark. Soon the kids won't be able to see what they're doing. <laughs> they will now. Ta-da! Shaky, shaky, shaky. Shaky, shaky, shaky. Shaky, shaky, shaky. Shaky, shaky, shaky. Looks like we've done it, sir. And there's still some grit left. Marvellous. That old shaky, shaky, shaky method works like a worm! <laughs> I'm fine! Good job we've got some grit left, sir. Shaky, shaky, son. Shaky, shaky, Ellie. <laughs> That's it! I'm not playing with you anymore, Norman, or that silly penguin! <gasps> Don't listen to him, Pengy! Come on, we'll show them! I've stood up for you. I told everyone you were a super penguin, and all you've done is make me fall over and look stupid. Derek's right. You are a silly penguin. <laughs> you having a bad day, Charlie? I've had better. Maybe we should go for a walk. Okay, Dad. See you later, Tom. Have a good one, mates. And now, oh, for a bit of a relax. Oh. <sighs> Flying a helicopter must be so cool. So cool. Not as cool as steering a fishing boat through a Force 9 gale. Right. So I think if we all hold things like this, we'll look more like volunteer firefighters. Good idea, Trevor. Oh, Maxie the hose. Uh, actually, mate, I think as I'm the chief volunteer firefighter, I should hold the hose. Actually, I'd like to hold the hose. Me too. Who says it's just the men that should hold the hose? No, uh, it's mine. No, let, let go. No, it's oh. mine. No, let's let's go. Go. It's mine. Let go. OK, it's Trevor. Mine. Let's let go, Dillis. Good idea, Helen. Perhaps I should have just gone to the beach today. Oh, oh no! I don't think I'm in Ponty Pandy anymore. Oh no! Oh no, 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 no! Okay, Tom, don't panic. Be cool. Use your helicopter pilot training. Think. Uh, swim to shore. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I'll swim back to shore. But, uh, which way is the shore? OK, now, no poses, no brave faces, nothing to hold. Just stand by Jupiter and be yourselves. All right, Sam. Looking great. Now, don't move. Taking it in three, two... Give me back my sausage! No, he's gonna... It's gonna to come back! <laughs> Where's Tom? The dinghy's gone! Why would he take the dinghy out in this weather? 
The tides come in past where the boat was. Tom must have fallen asleep and floated out into the fog. Come on, kids. We need to call Fireman Sam. Tom is lost in the fog out at sea. Tom is lost in the fog out at sea. Sorry, volunteers. You'll have to take your own photo. Penny and Ben? Tom is lost. Get Neptune and Titan ready now. Roger that, Sam. Roger that, Sam. Elvis, you come with me. OK, Sam. How's the barbecue going, Trevor? All ready for tonight, Mike. <laughs> You've done a good job fixing that heron. Thank you. Nothing that a dab of super glue couldn't fix. Oh, no. I'm going to need a bit more of that glue. Good work, everyone. Now, James, let's practice the froggy finale. <laughs> Well done, James. That really was froggy spectacular. <laughs> it's not fair. How come James gets to be the big froggy star? Because James has been reading all about frogs and how they move, Norman. And he's practised for ages dancing in those flippers. It's really hard. Ha! I could do it way better than James. Watch. <laughs> Norman, just be happy to be a normal froggy like us. But I want to be the star of the show. People should be clapping me. Me! Here we go, everyone. All right. First part of the drill, put out the fire with hoses. Roger that, sir. Ah! Ah! Sorry, sir. Maybe you should help Tom with the second part of the drill, Elvis. He's going to pick up water from the sea in that carrier and dump it over the flames. Oh, good idea, Sam. I like going up in the helicopter. Yes, and then you'd be uh, out of the way of uh, Station Officer Steel. <sighs> Soaking wet again. Always happens when Crittlington's about. Can't wait to see the show, eh? Have you heard? James is the star. He's got the big finale. Oh, I bet it'll be spectacular. I'm feeling a bit nervous, Mandy. Don't worry, James. You'll be great. Definitely. You're our top froggy. <laughs> what was that, Norman? Uh, uh, I should be the froggy star. I could easily dance in those flippers. No, you couldn't, Norman Price. But I could... There's only one star in this show, and it's James. He's going to do it brilliantly. <gasps> or maybe he isn't. Out of that so called star of the show. <laughs> That's the first fire out. I have to say it's a lot easier without crittling to the round. <laughs> Interrupt this broadcast to give you an emergency weather warning. Hey, guys, listen to this. A severe snowstorm is headed towards Ponty Pandy and the surrounding areas. That doesn't sound good. I'll call the weather station. And I'll call Sam. I've called everywhere. No one's got any big Christmas trees left. But the whole town is depending on us, Sam. What are we going to do? Um... Yes, Penny? Sam, we've got a severe snowstorm heading our way. OK. Call Moose and get him to check that no one's on the mountains. I'm on my way back. But, Sam, what about the tree? We need to forget about the tree for the moment, Mrs Chen. There's a snowstorm on the way. I'd head home if I were you. Okie dokie, Penny. I'll get my gear and I'll get up there. Snowy. Yeah, really Christmassy. So, where's our magical Christmassy Christmas surprise? 
up there? Because today we are going on a magical sleigh ride! Yeah! Any luck so far, Moose? Nothing so far, Penny. But I'm gonna keep checking. Are we nearly there yet? The sleigh is just up on the next peak. And this is gonna be magical and Christmassy, Grandad. Oh, yes. You're going to love it. It's the most marvelously magnificent sleigh that you will ever, ever see. I wouldn't exactly call that marvelously magnificent. I would call it totally terrible. Oh. But I bet it goes fast. Right, Grandad? It does. You'll soon be going so fast you feel like you're flying. So come on. Jump in! Uh, this doesn't feel very Christmassy. yet. Oh, I've got a splinter in my bottom. Hold tight, everyone. Here we go. Oh, that's a strong wind. Oh, I don't like wind. It looks like a snowstorm's coming. Right, everyone out. <laughs> We need to get back down the mountain. But we can't even see where we're going. And it's getting really c cold. This is the worst Christmassy Christmas surprise ever! Oh! Is that supposed to be me? I don't always wear that awful green outfit, you know. Bum, ba -da -da -da, bum, ba -da -ba -da, dun, dun, da -da 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 -da. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and grandads, welcome to the greatest show on earth. Brace yourselves for the breathtaking trapeze act. Ta -da! Trapeze act? <laughs> That's just a tire swing strung up to the rafters. No, it's not. <laughs> Act two, the incredible plate spinning routine. Ta-da! Oh. oh, um, are they meant to be falling and smashing? Norman, have you seen Auntie Phyllis's good china plate? Um, no, ma'am. What was that? Um. Act three! Hilarious clowning! Whoa. I thought you said this show was going to be spectacular! It will be, I promise! Um, wait till you see my next act! Wild and exotic animal taming! Yeah! A miniature garden at my miniature cottage. Yes. <laughs> now to glue on the flat pole. Careful of the wet. Whoa. Paint. Oh, me minivan. Whoa. Ah! Ah! Whoa. Watch out for me. Ah! Oh. Sorry, station officer Steele. Great tangled hoses. My village. Right, team. Time to shape up and get serious. Yes, yes Station Officer Steele. And now, live in the ring before your very eyes, I will tame a wild and exotic lion! <laughs> Behold the ferocious man-eating lion! That's it. I'm going home to play with my stamp collection. But, but you haven't seen Lion do his amazing trick. Jumping through the hoop of wonder. Lion, jump! It's easy, you silly cat. Look! Oh. Where am I? I'm the worst circus ever. Let's go! There's no hurry, you know. Oh, yes, there is. If I'm going to beat you. That's where you're wrong. You see, long distance paddling is about pacing yourself and enjoying the moment. Hey! <laughs> I enjoyed that moment. 
got you. <laughs> Come here. Oh, fantastic posters, Mandy. That should get a lot of people along to see Ben and Hannah. Thanks, Sam. Um, any idea what Norman's doing? He seems to be very quiet. Come to the Ocean Rescue Centre, Linda, to welcome Ben and Hannah home. Oh, and we should say Norman sent you. Ah, uh, not so quiet after all, then. Posters? Is that all? Turn up very loud, are they? Come to the Ocean I'm going to put up some more posters. Um, Sam, my hands are stuck. Don't worry, Mandy. Let's go and unstick them. Look, the northern boy. We're nearly there. Yay! Race you to the boy. Or are we pacing ourselves? <laughs> Not at all. I'm fine. Cool. Well, all we have to do now is paddle back. All we have to do? Are you sure you're okay, Ben? I'm fine. It's just that to go back, we'll be paddling against a really strong current. Not as strong as me. Ponty Bandy, here I come. Me too. Yes, indeedy. I think I'll use sticky tape from now on. Well, hopefully your posters and Norman's shouting will have done their job. I think the posters will have worked better than Norman's shouting. I heard that, Mandy. Actually, this is not shouting. It's an amplified <laughs> Now that's something you don't hear every day. Are you all right, Norman? I, I, I swallowed <laughs> I am and Sam. That's okay, Norman. Any sign of Ben and Hannah, Penny? Not yet, Sam. Mind you, the current is quite strong today. That's Ponty Pandy Island. We shouldn't be here. It's the current, Hannah. It's stronger than I thought. It's pushing us away from the mainland. That means we're a really long way off course. Oh, no. Why did all those boxes have to turn up? I've got Trevor coming to dinner tonight, and I wanted everything to look tidy. Now, what's this? Oh, whiffy candles. Just the thing for creating a romantic atmosphere. Lamplight on Flandadno. <sighs> oh, I'm not sure about that. Sunset over Swansea. Oh, smells a bit fishy. Maybe I'll get a better idea if I light them. Now, where are those matches? I'm really not sure about this, Norman. Well, I am. This will be Mr Penguin's new home from now on. fun as I thought it would be. You think? Your room is totally wrecked and stinks of fish. Maybe you need to get him into some water. The Ponty Pandy pool is nearby. We could take him there. Now! How are we going to get him into the swimming pool without anybody seeing him? What am I going to do with all these boxes? Now, Elvis, I think it might be better if you filled out the hydrant forms this time. OK, Sam. That way, I won't think about that poor, lost, little, waddly penguin. Pressure at 1.7 bar, Elvis. That's all you need to put down, Elvis. 
1.7. Elvis, <gasps> what are you doing? Oh, uh, I thought I'd do a missing poster of the penguin in case anyone sees him. I'm thinking I'll just remember the 1.7 thing, Sam. Probably a good idea, Penny. Right then, Mr. Penguin. Time for you to get out and enjoy sausages. <gasps> sausages? There are sausages in this box. <gasps> we took the wrong box. So where is Mr. Penguin? So what's it to be? Rainy day in Rill? Or ocean breeze over Cardiff? <gasps> Oh, I'll use them both. I'll just unpack that box. Then I can go and stuff Trevor's peppers. Oh, no. Oh, Mike, no one's going to stick their head through that if the paint's still wet. But it's my masterpiece. Why don't you just go and get the one you did last year? But I've worked on this for weeks. <gasps> I know. I've got a heater in the back of the van. I'll have a dry in no time. Won't be long now. It's not fair. You sat in the middle when we went to the zoo. It is so fair. You got to sit in the middle when we went to the fun fair. Anyone want to go on the siren? And you sat in the middle when we went to the seaside. You did. I'll take that as a no, then. Roll up, roll up, eh? Test your strength and win a prize. Hear that, Trevor? Look, you can win me a cuddly toy. Leave it to me, Dillis. <laughs> what? The machine must be broken. Of course it's not broken. Watch! Don't worry, Trev. You can win me a coconut instead. Come on! Let's see if she's dry yet. Oh! No one's ever going to see me masterpiece at this rate. Right, it's time to turn it up to the max. Hey, that'll dry you off, my little beauty. Oh, and just enough time for a quick pizza while I'm waiting. What? What's going on? Oh, bad luck, Trevor. I'll take another ten balls, please, Norman. I have to win something. Oh, uh, Great tangled houses. What's going on? Ah! Trevor! I'm just trying to win a coconut. <laughs> well, this is intolerable. I'm going to have to move somewhere else. Quiddington, I need your help. I'm going to back up. Tell me when I need to stop. OK, sir. No Norman Price. This should be a quiet day. Cadet day out. I am! But we were at Auntie Phyllis's and those two just kept going on and on about frilly nighty soppy singers and growing gooseberries. But I'm ready now and I can't wait to ride in Wallaby too! Um, Norman, the cadets have already left. What? Mom! Uh, I think I'll be going now. Glad I could, uh, help. <laughs> Bye! <sighs> I'm going to be the only cadet who didn't get to ride in Wallaby 2. Oh, no, you won't, my little treasure. Mummy will get you there. But how? Get in. We are off to the mountain centre, please. <laughs> to 
double check, we've got cadets Hannah, Sarah, James, Mandy, and my helper, Elvis. Eh? Oh, that's me! <laughs> <laughs> right, before we start the mountain rescue activities, I need to go over some rules. <laughs> hey, Sam, buddy, look, this is a picture of me up the mountain and then me down the mountain. <clears throat> and, uh, this is me halfway up the mountain. Sorry, Dan. Hey, you know, I think you two need something to do. Cadets, Sam and Moose are going to be the casualties for your first activity. So let's get the stretchers. <laughs> Thanks for that, Moose. Don't worry, my little wonder cadet. We are nearly there. Wallaby 2 is still here. We made it, Bob. I'm here. Where is everybody? That sounds like a helicopter taking off. Come in, Moose. This is Tom Thomas bringing Wallaby 2 to the Mountain Activity Centre to pick up the cadets. Over. Mom! We're supposed to be at the Mountain Activity Centre, not the Mountain Rescue Centre! Uh, uh, come back! <laughs> Don't worry, my angel face. You will ride in that helicopter. I know a shortcut. Wally Wizzle faces the evil wizard in a great and epic magical battle. You'll never cast a curse on me, Lord Lizard Face. Oh, yeah? Ice cream has a Oh, ah! Spaghetti Lexio! <laughs> oh, cat! What's so funny now? I'm sorry, Norman. He just doesn't look magical at all. Right! You want magic? I'll show you magic. <laughs> Special effect sparklers! Take this, Lord Lizard Face! Wait, what? <gasps> I think I'd better call Uncle Sam. Hey, guys! Are we all ready to come down? No, I am not. Hmm. I'm not having any luck turning it off. And Tom's not due back with the proper CD for hours. Listen, you overpriced, oversized bucket of junk. Switch off now, and that's an order. Oh, I'm sorry, Norris. I'm afraid I can't do that. Well, I'll show you. Uh, no, sir, I, I don't think that's a... Switch to pool party mode. Great heaven! <laughs> Ooh, tropical. Oh, oh, a wizard's battle has caused a wildfire in the mountains, and it's spreading quickly. I think it's going to be one of those days. There, all out. Sparklers and dry grass? Not a good mix, Norman. Sorry, Fireman Sam. I was just trying to be extra magical. You know what would be really magical? If you stayed out of trouble for the rest of the day. The final scene will be danger-free, I promise. Well, let's hope so. And now, the big broom flying scene! Take one! No, Norman. That zip wire's really high up. It's all part of my mega magical special effects. I want this movie to go viral, remember? I want so many hits, I break the internet. The only thing you'll break is your leg. I'll be OK. I am an ace director. Oh, I can't look. <laughs> Woohoo! Make it stop! Wally Wizzo, Master Wizard, is dangling from a zip wire above the waterfall, hanging upside down by his foot. I should have seen that one coming, really. 